Greetings, Magnificent Souls, to the Attract Health, Build Wealth podcast, where we have open and honest discussions about ourselves. This is your host, Lily Bewley, and I am honored to have conversations here with thought leaders, visionaries, healers, and even solo conversations with myself about things I am currently reflecting on. This is a place where we break down, break away, and break through our emotional trauma, allowing ourselves to attract health, build wealth, and live a peaceful life. We are tired of being sick and tired. We are tired, but we are not giving up. We know that there is something magnificent inside of us. And because we are fighting daily, hourly, and by the minute, fighting ourselves, our kids, our spouses, we have to do things differently. We have to break the cycle. We don't have a million chances. We have to be happy now. We have to find a way. So how do we do that? How is that possible? If you look around at what society is telling you, they tell you that what we're doing is impossible. Yet it's happening every single day. It's happening through the practice and the love that we call awakening the magnificent soul. We are all magnificent souls. And these are our stories of healing. Today in episode 74, I welcome Coot Blackson to the show to talk about his new book, The Magic of Surrender. We talk about so, so many great subjects, including surrender, how we got to this place of massive surrender, and so, so many other great topics. But before we get into the podcast, don't forget to let me know your thoughts about this episode, any feedback you have, or anything you would like me to cover on future podcasts at epiphanyvault.com. Remember, it is a safe place, and I would welcome the discussion. Also, a favor from you, I would love to hear from you about who you would think would be great for the show. Let me know who you would like me to interview at theepiphanyvault.com, and you can submit that there, and I will reach out to them per your request. And this episode is sponsored by the Align into Authenticity Coaching Program, which is open for enrollment until August 23rd. If you are at the point where you are open to receiving support in healing your anxiety at the root instead of just the symptoms so that you can have more self-love and a life that you love, I am inviting you to set up a complimentary call with me to see if this program is the right fit for you. You can do that at meetwithlily.com and I will link that up in the show notes as well. And about my guest today, Coot Blackson. Coot is a beloved inspirational speaker and transformational teacher, which you can definitely hear on this interview. He speaks at countless events that he organizes around the world, as well as outside events, including AFEST, Young Presidents Organization, Entrepreneurs Organization as well. He's a member of the Transformational Leadership Council, which is a select group of 100 of the world's foremost authorities in the personal development industry. That is on my radar. Winner of the 2019 Unity New Thought Walden Award, Coot Blackson is a widely considered a next generation leader in the field of personal development. His mission is simple, to awaken and inspire people across the planet to access inner freedom, live authentically, and fulfill their true life's purpose. I know you are going to thoroughly enjoy this discussion with Coot Blackson. Coot, thank you for coming on the show. I'm so excited for this conversation today. It's great to be here. Yes, absolutely. So let's start off strong. And let's start off strong. Okay. Let's do it. <laughs> let's see. Let's see where we go now. Okay. <laughs> uh, I want to talk. You. Know, I want to dive in and really start to talk about the book that you released in May, mm. um, "The Magic of Surrender." It makes me feel like that you have quite a story <laughs> to tell about getting to this place of surrender. And I was wondering if you would share that with us and also talk about why this book and maybe how this developed along in your journey as well. Sure. 
Uh, this was not the book that I thought I was going to write. Let's put it that way. So when you see, when you see why this book, uh, uh, the book took, took me by surprise. I had a whole bunch of ideas of what I thought the book should be, what I thought I was going to write. Um, I, I had written on a, on a wall, basically on a whiteboard, a huge wall, a whole, like hundreds of ideas of, of, of books and titles and topics. And, and then one day I was really trying to make a book happen, books I thought would sell, books I thought people mm. would like, books I thought would be catchy, books I thought had great titles. And I mean, they all seemed, sounded amazing, but nothing connected. And then one day it was as though the soul of this book came through and it was very clear to me, everything I was trying to piece together, the essence underlying all was the word surrender. And mm. that's when I saw that the book was about surrender and the book that was seeking to be written was really about surrender. And my job was really to surrender to the book that was seeking to be written rather yeah. than the book I thought I should write. And, uh, that's when things unfolded. But the real journey, I think, of the book that perhaps inspired the book, I didn't even know inspired the book or was inspiring the book, was years before the end of 2016, my new book was out. It was a bestseller. I was traveling a lot. Um, my mother was diagnosed with uh, stomach cancer. And that's what I think began the journey of planting the seeds for the book. So I was living in Los Angeles and I was driving back. I was flying back and forth between LA and London, where my mother was, to be with her in chemo sessions literally every month. I'd fly back and forth, be with her for a week, fly back, be with her for... And so this was an entire year process. And mm -hmm. I learned so much just being with my mother, who I was always very close to. Uh, but during this process, what I got to witness, I think, planted the seeds for the book, because during this whole time, she we would just sit and talk in her chemo and hang out and do pretty much nothing and everything and just chill nothing special and she was never sad she was never mad she was never upset she never felt like a victim she just was just at peace totally at peace and when the doctor said um there's nothing else we can do for you basically you know they have a loving conversation and they tell you that you're going to die in a nice mm -hmm. way. So get your affairs in order. I mean, it's a mm -hmm. kind of an intense moment when you realize right. this is it. And for me, I had gone back to London to try and heal my mother and, you know, take her alternative mm. methods of healing and I'm going to heal her and get her better and she's going to live a long life. And pretty soon into this process, I realized that no matter what I do, no amount of meditation, prayer, visualization, no matter what I do, is not going to work. It's not going to heal, heal her. She's going to die. And so I had to surrender to the journey and the process, mm -hmm. regardless of my will for her life. I realized I'm really not in control of this journey. And that was very humbling. Uh, but yeah. that f freed me up to uh, drop all resistance to just be with her so fully. You know, when I really accepted that she is going to die, every phone call became so precious. Every, mm -hmm. every time we just sat down to have a cup of tea, you know, things I took for granted, all the things I took for granted became so incredibly precious, you know? And, and I remember feeling, I'll be honest, filled with, not in a bad way, but in a very heart opening way, filled with so many regrets of things I had wished I had done with my mother, but I thought I had so much time and I've got tomorrow and here I am running around and it just put into perspective so much of what's really important in life. Mm -hmm. And when the doctor said, this is it, you have days, maybe weeks, maybe months to live. Uh, I looked at my mother before we drove home and I said to her, uh, are you afraid? And she said, no, she said two things. No, I'm not, not, I'm not afraid because I know I'm not this body. This body is just a vehicle for my soul. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not going to die. I, I'll always be with you. And that was really impactful for me. And then I said to her, mm -hmm. is there anything that I can do for you to make your last days easier? Like, what do you need? What can I buy, do, take you? Well, tell me what you need. And she said, I don't need anything. All I really want is what God wants for my life. Mm. And in that simple statement, for me, 
was the epitome and the essence of her freedom. She was at peace. She was in total surrender in that she wasn't attached to living. She wasn't attached to dying. She was just totally surrendered to whatever the unfolding of her life was. And I saw her so at peace, you know, and, and I think for me, she's just my mother. So I, you don't really appreciate your mother, you know, and, and, and I look back at my life and I saw that she had lived surrender her entire life. Here was a Japanese woman who had married an African guy in the seventies. You know, this was quite unusual back then and moved. She never met him, never seen him, didn't speak any English and moved sight unseen, have never, never met him, met him one time in, in, in Japan when he came, had 45 minutes, got married, moved to Africa. And so she had been living this surrender her whole life. And so when she passed away, I started to reflect on her life. I started to reflect on what I'd been living. I started to reflect on my father, who was a miracle working, you know, spiritual teacher, so to speak. Um, and I started to reflect on the great ones, whether it was Jesus, whether it's Buddha, whether it's Gandhi, whether it's Muhammad Ali, whether it's Mandela, whether it's Mother Teresa, they all practice this thing called surrender. To me, this mm -hmm. was the, the key to their greatness. At some point, they surrendered themselves, each of them in their own way, to a calling, to a purpose, to, 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 to life, you know, a purpose yeah. that was bigger than themselves. And in that surrender, they transcended themselves and they were available to life, mm. living and manifesting through them. And I think what life can do through us is more than what we can do on our own. And so the book Surrender came about in a very strange way. But I think in our culture, as I was reflecting on surrender, I had some resistance. I'm like, who the hell? People don't want to surrender. I mean, it's like going to the dentist, surrender. Because you know, that means <laughs> letting go, wait, right? Wait, wait, what? No. What? <laughs> yeah, no. We love control, don't we? We love control, right? Yeah. We, we, we want to be in control. And then yeah. like, so I'm like, oh, I have to write a book about surrender, but it just, it felt so right. It just felt like mm. this is the book I was born to write. At least in this moment, it felt so right. And so I think in our culture, surrender is, there's a misconception that to surrender is weak, that to yes. surrender is passive, that if you surrender, you're going to be left behind. You're going to be taken advantage of. You won't manifest your goals, dreams, and desires. But what I'm actually saying that if you surrender, what if you got more, like more, more mm -hmm. than you could uh, envision and imagine and plan for yourself, like more blessings, more, more. It may not look like what you thought, but what if it was beyond, you know? Mm. And so to surrender is to let go of control or the control that we think we have that mm. we really don't have is to let go of control yeah. and this constant worrying about everything to surrender is to, shall we say, stop trying to force and manipulate life to fit into our small idea of what we think life should be to surrender is to let go of who we think we should be based on society and family and those around us is to let go of the life that we think we should be living so that we can actually open to the life that we're here to truly live mm. authentically, you know? Ah, and, it's so good. Yeah. And be available to that. So this is surrender. It's an openness. It's a willingness. It's, it's not laziness. It's, it's, it's a commitment to be curious, to be open, to be available to life itself. And so we can go deeper into other things. Oh my God. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. And this book was a beautiful storytelling. Um, you touched on a lot of the things that you just mentioned. And, oh man, I have so many, so many things that came up when you were saying that. But, you know, what do you say to those people that my, let me, let me just say, my assumption is in, the, in writing this book, because this is like kind of where I'm driven from, like my purpose is to help people get there before their deathbed or before, right? Like that they are, are faced with this yeah. like life or death situation. And we didn't talk about this, but my, my story was I was in a life or death situation. Like I was in a point where um, like suicide came into my life and, you know, like I was at the point of being, my, my listeners know this, so I'm sharing this with you now, but suicide came into my life. Like I was at the point of either 
physically, mentally, spiritually, emotionally dying or come into this awakening and surrender didn't happen automatically for me. Um, so what would you say to those people who are saying like, oh, I have like, I have this really like narcissistic person in my life, or this is really hard. And I, I can't even spend my own money and all this other stuff that, that they would see maybe as barriers to this like free life that you were explaining, what would you say to people? Well, well first, uh, I, ju I just want to set a context uh, so, so we can understand that it doesn't really matter what you're living. You mm. can be Pablo Escobar, you can be Mother Teresa, you can be Bill Gates, you can be Oprah, you can be the richest, the poorest person. Mm. Every human being, we are in a process of surrender. The fact that we are alive is a process of surrender. Mm. Think about it. Surrender is actually hardwired into your physiology. Every breath, you take a breath in and you exhale. This is like life reminding you of, of the nature of life. It, 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 it's surrender. You know, you can't just breathe in, breathe in, breathe in. You, you have to exhale. This is surrender. Mm. We are being surrendered every moment. You know, as we as we get older, 25, 26, 27, 30, 40, 50, the hair changes, the we get white hair, we get older, the body changes. This is a process of surrender. So it's not about whether we're going to surrender. We are all being surrendered. Mm. We are all surrendered in, in the process of surrender. It's just really about how we participate with the process. We can either resist it or we can realize that we're in it. It's a part of what's happening every moment and participate with it fully. So that I just want to say surrender is just the nature of, of, of life, just being human, whether you're mm. spiritual or whether you're not spiritual. Now, I do understand that we all have different situations. We all face challenging situations, difficult situations. What I do want to say is surrender is not being a doormat. Surrender is mm. not letting people take advantage of you. Surrender is to have, I believe, the courage to not compromise your truth and stand for what you know is right. And so that might mean sometimes telling someone, fuck you. No, that might mean sometimes saying, I'm not going to do that. That might mean sometimes uh, uh, acknowledging the hard truth, which might be, I can no longer be around this person. Surrendering to the truth of what you know is authentic and true yes. inside in honoring yourself. So surrender is yes. not weakness. It might mean getting that divorce or breaking up or leaving that job or, or cutting that toxic person in your life. Surrender doesn't mean just sitting there being a doormat. It might, it is to feel the deepest truth in your heart and your being and having the courage to honor that. That mm. I think is surrender. And so I would say surrender starts with the willingness to look at what lies am I telling myself? Thank you know, you. What, what lies am I telling myself? Because in many ways, one of the things that stops us from surrendering is we're constantly BSing ourselves and rationalizing mm -hmm. and making excuses. You know, that, that person, they're, they're doing their best. You know, they're, they're, they're going through a hard time, even though they're abusing me. You know, they're, they're, it's, no, it's been mm -hmm. 10 years. It's not okay. So surrender is to honor, is to, to have the courage to tell the truth to yourself about who you are, about what you feel, about what's real, what's really happening inside of you. That's number one. And it can be scary because sometimes we're afraid if I tell the truth, what are the consequences? It's going to mean the end of the relationship. It's going to mean yeah. that person won't be happy. And so it can be sometimes mm -hmm. scary to tell the truth, but that's, I think, where we have to begin with surrender, telling the truth. So what lies am I telling myself? What am I pretending to not know? And what are, and to sit with what are the lies that I'm telling myself? What is it costing me? Because when we're not living in alignment, there is a pain. It mm -hmm. does hurt. Mm -hmm. It is... It, it is painful. So if you're feeling pain, mm, that is a signal you, many times that something is not in alignment, that there's something deeper inside that is needing some attention. And so when you're not in alignment with your truth or you're betraying yourself in some way, not honoring yourself in some way, not being honored in some way, it's meant to be painful. It's mm. meant it's meant to be painful. It shouldn't be like that person cheated on you. They hit you. They dishonored you. You cheat on yourself. You didn't respect yourself and you feel great. 
that that's not healthy. It's not meant to feel good. And that feeling of pain is a signal that something's off. We have to use that feeling as a feedback mechanism to ask ourselves, what is this feeling telling me that I need to be honest about and pay attention to? And the surrender is the willingness to own that, own that. But what we tend to do, I think many times is we deny the pain. We distract from it. We sex it yep. away, drink yep. it away, shop it yep. away, work it mm -hmm. away, right? Suppress it. And mm -hmm. we deny our truth. And that allows situations to keep going. And so I think that's a place people can begin is with the truth. Now, yeah. I, please. I, I, I will say that a few people might be wondering, well, you know, I'm projecting into the conversation, but they might be thinking, well, how do I know I'm lying to myself? If I'm lying to myself, you know, and that can be a, a, a sneaky thing. And so, yeah. and so, and so, I think just to provide some perspective for, for those listening in, if you're in that situation, um, there's a few ways or a few uh, signals that you might be lying to yourself. Number one, uh, you may manifest some emotional pain in the form of, let's say, depression. Right? That can be a sign: depression uh internal resentment frustration inner angst anxiety that can be a sign if so if that's there on some level or whatever the scale ask yourself hmm mm -hmm. you might say no cool i'm fine i'm living authentically but i'm depressed constantly uh, something doesn't add up so look to see if there's some emotional turmoil in the form of depression or anxiety or frustration or whatever the scale is uh there might be some uh, physical ailment for instance you know mm -hmm. neck ache back ache so so that suppressed truth that suppressed pain manifest in some physical momentary ailment uh yeah. it might manifest if it's consistent in some disease you know a uh, thyroid uh, right. uh, autoimmune cancer autoimmune right so mm -hmm. again our body is simply speaking to us and the mm. truth that we're not being uh, consciously acknowledging is manifesting through our body because the body has an intelligence um sometimes it might manifest i found where because we're not honoring the natural flow of our authentic truth and emotion. We're not in harmony with ourselves. Our energy isn't sort of flowing in harmony. Life stops flowing in a certain way. You know, it just, things just aren't quite flowing for us in life and connecting in. I feel a little disjointed. So this can be a sign like, why is, why things just always not quite syncing up? And this can be a sign that something's off. The other way is, you might manifest, I think, people in your life that express or play out your suppressed emotion or your suppressed feeling. Like, mm -hmm. why do I keep attracting angry people? Or why do I keep attracting depressed people? I'm fine. I'm not, I'm great, but these people. And so if that keeps yeah. happening, that can be a sign that you may not be honoring the truth of something. And so use that as a signal to call yourself on where you might be in denial. And so there's a few stages, I think, of surrender that we can get into if you want to also. Yeah, totally. And thank you for laying that out there too. Would, do you think would like different behaviors and patterns, like you're talking about, like, like um, coping mechanisms also be something that can alert someone to like lack of awareness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think so, for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Um, thank you. I just, I, the, the energy that I'm feeling right now, I hope whoever's listening can feel it too, because it's powerful and so many mic drops all over the place. Um, <laughs> can we talk, can we talk about truth? Yeah. Um, what I found in my journey is this place of like complete, like really disassociation, dissociation and disconnection from my inner self and my inner truth. Um, one of my signature programs is called align into authenticity. And that really has been the theme of my growth and my journey is really coming back into what you, what you're talking about is truth. That, and I'd love to talk about and get your, your take on that is how do we do that? Number one. And number two is, what if we don't know what our truth is? Yeah, I, I think it goes back to, if we don't know what our truth is, 
I think we can begin to acknowledge that pain, you know, gotcha. because I, I, mm -hmm. I think that the, the pain starts showing us, it starts giving us a clue. Like at least we know what our truth isn't right. But many mm. times we, we That's don't true. acknowledge the, we don't, we don't That's acknowledge the, the pain. So if we don't acknowledge our pain, we can't acknowledge our truth because we're not acknowledging that we're out of truth. We're in denial. So mm. we're in that first stage where we're in denial. We don't even know that we're lying. And so that's why I think it's so important to acknowledge the pain because so long as there's pain, it's clear that there's, you're out of truth. And that pain can also point you to where your truth is. If you look at the pain, the pain points you to where your truth is. So I would invite people to, to really be willing to sit with their pain, to feel their pain to acknowledge their pain, to not run from their pain, not wallow in it, not kind of be addicted to that, but just use that pain as a, as, as a feedback to go, I'm out of truth and mm -hmm. feel, feel deeper, like really be raw and honest. Okay. Knowing that this is off, what, it, what is my deepest truth? And I think deep down, we know, we have a sense mm -hmm. deep down, if we're really, 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 really honest, we have a sense, there's a part of us that knows. We know because we feel yes. it. We know yeah. because we have a sensation. We know because there's a sensation in our body. It's like, wow, my body, there's a you know sensation. I'm feeling something. You know, We know because there's just a sense like, hmm, something's off. But we often just deny or don't pay attention to uh, the deeper truth. So acknowledge the pain, but start paying attention to thoughts, the emotions, the physical sensations and the signals, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and start aligning with that. I think that's, that's a place to begin. Totally. Yeah. Thanks for pointing that out. Um, I just, like I said, for me, it was really, really hard to like, I was in my head a lot. Like I understood, like there was a point where I really understood of like why things were happening to me and everything like that, but it still was very hard to, um, come back into my like aligned center. I, and I, I love yeah, we have to feel, I think it's important in our body. Yeah, you know, because totally. Many, many times you might think, well, I should do this. And many times we convince ourselves that we believe what we believe, but something feels off. Something feels off. Like, yeah, I'm really my truth, but I got constant diarrhea in this situation and I don't, my stomach is off and I have a headache. And it's like mm -hmm. your, your, your body is speaking to you. And so if we can stop and say, something's off something uh, is maybe i don't even know what is on but i know that something's off and mm -hmm. I, if i'm willing to acknowledge that then i can use that as a uh, a stepping stone to what it is that i really feel is my truth what i also tell people mm -hmm. is take all the pressure off of yourself in having to take action mm -hmm. take all because sometimes we're That's afraid so good. right of yeah if I acknowledge that I'm in a relationship that isn't, oh shit, this, that means I have to break up now. And I'm, I, 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 I'm too afraid to break up now. And so then we don't even acknowledge the truth because we're afraid of the consequences of what our truth might mean. So we deny the truth and we suppress the truth and we bury the truth even more. I'm saying, take all the pressure off of taking action and just acknowledge what you feel without having to to do anything about it. And so that just means saying, okay, I'm in a relationship. I'm no longer in love. I'm in a relationship that's not aligned. That's it. Nothing else. No action. Just be with that. Be, yeah. Just be with that. Uh, I, I'm working a job that I hate. I hate my job. Oh, shit, I'm afraid if I really tell myself the truth about that, what does that mean? You don't have to take action. I hate my job. Be with that and feel that. And mm. just give yourself the space and the permission to have your process to acknowledge the truth without having to take action. That's something I would. Yeah, I that, think that, that you go ahead. I'm sorry. No, that creates a space for us to to actually give ourselves the permission to let our truth come up, because sometimes mm. we don't let our, the, the protective mechanism inside of us doesn't let the truth come up because it's trying to protect us from what the truth might mean. Totally. Right? But we have to acknowledge, too. By not dealing with the truth, we will have to deal with it. By not dealing with it, we will have to deal yes. with it. <laughs> By, we'll, it we'll, we'll deal with it five years from now, but we're going to deal with it. So, you know, yes. ask yourself, 
how do I want to deal with it now, next year, yeah. five years, but it's not going anywhere. You know? Yeah. You just spoke to probably 99% of the audience because I know, and the 1%, which is me, which is <laughs> the, the anxiety, you know, the anxiety, that anxious stuff that you're talking about, about not being able to just sit and be, which is a, like a, a skill that I learned later on in life, obviously is so, so important. And that's what I think that really would hit home with most of the audience. But the part that you're talking about, the 1%, which is me, which is the avoidant, classic avoidant here, which is pushing it away, um, not acknowledging it. It's not like you said, it's not, it doesn't go away. It's going to stay with you until, like yeah. you said, that process. Um, I was wondering, I don't know if we touched on any of it, but the steps to surrender. Yeah, the steps what to would surrender. You, so what would you say, you know, how would you guide people through this like beautiful <laughs> awakening, <laughs> right? Like this beautiful presence of home. I call it homecoming, like coming back to self. Can you lead yeah. us through some of that? Yeah. I mean, it's look, it's not always easy. Let's, let's just acknowledge that. So I think if we can just, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't have to be a struggle, but it's not always easy. And so, um, the human journey takes courage, right? And, and so ju just as, as a kind of guideline of a map, um, we touched on it a, a little bit, but I would say one of the first stages is denial. Denial. We, when we are, we don't even know that we're lying. We're just living whatever we're living. We're unconscious. We're doing what we're doing. We're either kind of consciously in denial or we're just unconsciously in denial. We're just doing what we're doing. We're asleep. Right? We're, we're asleep. We're asleep. <laughs> and so denial. But then there comes a moment where maybe we begin to question ourselves. Maybe an mm -hmm. event happens, a situation happens, and uh, something is said, someone watches a podcast, we begin to question, wait a second, is who I am who I really am? Is this what I really want? Is this what I really believe? Is there another way? Mm. Maybe I'm not, maybe this, perp this job I'm doing isn't really what I'm meant to be doing with my life. And so the questioning begins. So that moves into another phase. Then another phase kicks in, which is resistance, right? That's the next phase where we start resisting because the ego, our uh, sense of self, our perceived sense of self, the ego that we identify with as ourselves, not really ourselves, it's just the sense of uh, who we think we are based on our mm -hmm. identification from our memories, from our past, from our conditioning, from our culture, from our parents that we hold on to and go, this is me and how we hold ourselves together, ego kicks in. It's like, wait a second. If what I believe is not what I really believe, and I believe that who I am is my beliefs, then if you let go of those beliefs, who the hell am I going to be? So ego kicks in and says, no, 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 don't change. That's where the resistance starts happening. So the next phase is we start resisting the truth. We start pushing away the resistance. That game goes on for a moment, sometimes a lifetime or decades, mm -hmm. right? Then we move <clears throat> to the next phase of, I would say, negotiation. We begin to negotiate. So we're not resisting as much, but now we're like, okay, I think some things need to change, but we're still afraid of the consequences. So mm. we, start, we start negotiating. Maybe I, maybe I don't have to do that and can do this maybe they're not you know my 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 spat, my, my boyfriend girlfriend they're mm. not so they're not so bad yeah I mean, I know or, they, or they, yeah or they yeah, didn't hit me so it's they, okay. they didn't hit, you know well no they hit me but they love me so much that's why they're doing it they can't help mm -hmm. themselves they love me so much that they just because they love me they just acted out like that and we start making or so we start negotiating we negotiate with our destiny we now start negotiating with us without with our purpose you know and so the negotiation begins but there's a moment where you negotiate and you realize no matter how much you negotiate nothing's going to change Mm -hmm. life isn't going to change your health isn't going to change your financial situation is not going to change and so you start realizing negotiating is not going to work then we move into a next phase of acceptance acceptance is a powerful stage you know lots of spiritual books are written about acceptance accept your reality accepting what is uh, in order to change something you have to come into relationship with it so that mm -hmm. you can really shift it right and so here's the thing acceptance does not equal or mean surrender. And many people make a mistake thinking, oh, I'm in acceptance, so I'm in surrender. 
this is not the case. You can be in acceptance, but not in surrender. And I'll explain. Acceptance mm -hmm. is, yes, you accept what is, but you can still be subtly, internally resisting what's happening in a state of acceptance. So for it, let's say it's raining outside. You want to go outside to go to the beach. It starts raining outside. Now you're pissed off and mad that it's raining outside. You accept that it's raining outside, so you take an umbrella, but you're pissed off, mad, furious at the universe that it's raining outside. You go outside and moaning, groaning, complaining, and, you know, uh, grumpy and just sort of arms crossed, like, okay, I'll deal with it, but it shouldn't be. The experience I'm having is not the experience I should be having. Mm. But, you, but you, you, you do accept it's raining, but you're not participating fully with an open heart. See, surrender is the open-hearted participation in the experience and the process of life that is unfolding. The open-hearted, full participation mm. in the experience that is unfolding, even if the experience isn't what you think it should be or what you'd like it to be, because it's unfolding, you, part, you participate with a full heart. In order to do that, mm. there's, one, there's one belief and there's one perspective. One thing I found that is really important, at least I found, is that the universe is always working for our highest good, even if we're not able to see that in this moment. And sometimes when things don't happen or go according to plan, it pisses us off. We get mad. We get frustrated. We, we feel depressed. We feel, you know, un we want to give up. We feel whatever we feel. Uh, but many times when things don't happen according to how we want it to happen, we're not able to see the perspective we're not able to see the reason why that is unfolding in this particular moment and so i believe that when you really understand that the universe is always working for your evolution and growth the universe is always working mm. for your highest good even when things don't work out according to plan if you really trust that then you can stay in a space of surrender in a space of shall we say curiosity to go mm -hmm. okay rather than thinking i know why what is happening and what's not happening let me just be open and curious as to what better thing could be unfolding right now if the universe is working for my right. highest for my highest good and so that's one thing the other thing is i think when you realize that you are a soul you're a soul incarnated into this human experience and we incarnate into this human experience to grow to learn to evolve to me life is shall we say soul school Life is a school for the evolution of our soul and we incarnate to learn lessons in every situation, every breakup, every hardship, every turmoil, every illness, every difficult, challenging person we meet really is our teacher that we are, our soul is seeking to learn, to grow, to evolve through so that we can be more of who we really are and be more love and learn the lessons. When we understand, when we shift our perspective from the one dimensional perspective of life to a deeper sort of soul perspective, soul way of seeing life. Life is a school. Everything is a lesson. Then even when the situation may not be what you want, or the situation might be very, very challenging, when you understand it's about your soul's evolution and learning, mm -hmm. then, then you can surrender and participate fully with the experience that's happening and go, okay, this sucks. But there must be a reason. And if it's about the growth and the learning of my soul, then let me roll my sleeves up and just, it's raining, but I'm going to dive right in and learn what I need to learn, where I'm at with who I'm with, so I can go and evolve and evolve to the next level. Because all mm. lessons repeated until the, then the surrender is in the evolution and the growth and the learning so that you can go and evolve. Not staying stuck, but that's the growth. Between surrender and acceptance, and here's the key, mm. there, is a, there is a phase. And it is what most people miss. It is a phase I call grieving. Grieving. Yes. Oh my so, God, yes. Surrender yeah. is a death. You know, yeah. it's a letting go. It's, it's a letting go of what you thought. It's a letting go of unmet expectations. It's a letting go. Like, you know, in 2020, a lot of dreams went by the wayside and we had to grieve. We had to let go of things, but many of us, we haven't grieved the loss of dreams that didn't happen. Right. Yes. And, 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 or the loss of who we thought we were or an identity or who or, or a phase of our life or aging or a death of a relationship. And so to really to really surrender into this, <laughs> shall we say, 
open-hearted, blissful space of, of surrender that we're talking about, you have to be willing to grieve, to grieve the loss, to grieve the old. And many times we don't get to that I'm surrendered state because we haven't allowed ourselves to really, really grieve. All feelings mm -hmm. remain present until we feel them. And it's only when we grieve that we let go of the old and we can actually open to the new. And sometimes I find that we don't really allow ourselves to grieve because it's cultural. You know, we think that we think that the grief will last forever. We think that if I grieve, I'm going to be heartbroken and won't be able to handle the grief, you know, or, or yep. sometimes we, we, we unconsciously don't let ourselves grieve as a way to hold on to the thing from the past. Like mm -hmm. if I, if I don't let myself grieve the death of my mother, then maybe she's not really gone and I can still stay connected to her. You know, if right. I don't let myself grieve that sometimes we don't let ourselves grieve as a spiritual bypass. And so we want to stay, for instance, in a high vibration. I want to stay in a high vibration, you know, the law of attraction, the high vibration. So I don't want to acknowledge the grief because that's not a high vibration. So we don't realize okay. that we suppress that. We suppress the grieving, but all feelings remain present until fully felt. So we don't realize that we carry that old grieving energy vibrationally with us into the future. And we keep recreating situations that correspond to that energy yeah. rather than sh grieving and shedding and let it go. So grieving is a key phase. I would invite people to ask themselves, what is it I need to grieve that I mm. haven't grieved? What is it that I need to grieve that I haven't grieved? Grieving is not wallowing. Grieving is not wallowing. Let me repeat. It is feeling the feeling fully so that you can release it and let it go. And I think that's, that's really a key. What I would just say finally is, when you take the late, and this might help people, when you, every, like grief, for instance, has its own cycle. Every feeling has a cycle. No feeling lasts forever. When you feel the grief, or when you feel that, that, that pain, take the label off of the feeling. This is what I found really helpful. Take the label off of the feeling. So take, take the label off of grief or sadness or anger, because many times we have judgments about these feelings. And mm. just experience the feeling as energy. Feelings are just energy and emotion. So if you can just experience the feeling as energy, and sensation without label or form or judgment or, or preconceived story and just experience the feeling as a sensation in your body and be with that without pushing it away, without yes. trying to get rid of it, without trying to do anything. You just experience your experience fully as it's happening. You'll find and notice what's happening. You'll find that you're fully being with the feeling. The sensation begins to move it in its own way and it will dissolve in its own way with time. And so I think yeah. that that's what really helps us feel. And so then we can move into surrender and then we can move into the flow and the magic. Ooh, I'm just going to let that sit for <laughs> a sec. <laughs> you are speaking directly to my heart and my soul. Thank you. <laughs> but I think you're so right about grief. So right about grief. Yeah. I The way that I've experienced grief is... <clears throat> Like grief, not fully grieved for me is like guilt and shame. Mm, mm, um, mm. And again, that was something that I had to learn because it wasn't uh, like you said, there's societal pressures in the family we grew up in and man, that spiritual bypass and the everything that you're throwing at. Yeah, it's so good. You know um, what I what I found too for me when, when my mother passed away, uh, I felt a lot of grief. I mean, I was grieving the year that I was with her while she was alive. Mm -hmm. But there was a there was a depth of grief I felt when she passed. And it was so beautiful in a strange way. It was hard. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for me, it was in letting myself feel the grief that I found out the real power of what I am, that we all are. You know, it was, I felt the grief and and my heart broke open. It's like my heart shattered. Right. The shape of my heart's capacity shattered. And I'll be feeling the grief. And what happened is as your heart breaks, 
and breaks and breaks and breaks. The, the limit of your heart's capacity also breaks open and there's more love and there's, yes, there's, there's, more, there's space. More, more space. And mm -hmm. through the process in each cycle of grieving, what I find that you will find is through the grieving and the grieving and the grieving, you're still there. You're still here. You're still alive. You're still standing. And, and so through that, you find a deeper strength of what cannot be broken. And that strength that comes through the process of grieving, of being broken open and still being, is a bigger strength than denying the grief. It's, it's like mm. I've, been, I've been burned through the fire and I'm still here. And that's a whole deeper dimension of strength and, that you find in yourself as a human being. So we're totally. stronger. We are stronger than we can imagine. Oh my gosh. Yes. We are so resilient. That's for sure. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say too, that like, I think you mentioned this, but I think it, for some reason, I mean, called to, to point this out, I think because of my journey, grief doesn't have to be like you were saying that crazy major thing that happens to you, like the death of, of a family member. It can be like, I've grieved the past self that, or I don't know, whatever book I didn't write or whatever yes. project I had to, yes. to stop or, yeah. you know, even within relationship, especially with my family who caused a lot of my emotional trauma, I have grieved that past relationship that I've had with them so that I can step to, into a new relationship yeah. with them so that I can yeah. define what that relationship is for me in my best interest and my highest good. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had a friend who was getting married. She found the love of her life <laughs> and she was sad. I'm like, what's the deal? You're about to get married. She's like, I'm, gr I'm, gr I'm grieving, but I feel guilty. And as we started talking, she realized that she was grieving the end of a phase of her life, you know, that, mm -hmm. that, that was the end of a phase of like being single and, 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 and having what she, a sense of independence and maturing into a different phase and all of the loves that weren't. And she, she just didn't realize that that's what she needed to grieve, which was not bad. It was a beautiful thing as she was moving into this, this deeper phase of commitment. And so grief can happen in, in so many ways. Yeah, the book we didn't write and the dreams that didn't happen or the child that didn't happen or yeah. so many things that we can grieve in. We can just be with them, be with the grief, allow the grief and let it move through and let it dissolve. And it can move through you in layers, right? In layers. Totally. Yeah. On the other side, it's just like you're saying, it's just so free and that, that heart space, right? That you, what I've learned is like the heart space that I've opened up is it just leaves room for all of just the goodness, right? Exactly. Instead of the, instead of the energy for fighting or the energy for the pain that you're talking about, or the, you know, whatever that was kind of really taking my energy away from my true self. Right. It just yeah, opens yeah. up so much space. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> so good. So yeah, good. The, the next level of our life will require the next level of who we are. And the next level of who we are requires that we let go of the old that is not aligned, the old ways of thinking, the old addictions, the old mindset, the, the old emotions. And it's when we let go that we make space for the new. And so we cannot manifest a new version of life being an old version of ourself and holding on mm. to holding on to the old just keeps us stuck, you know, it just keeps us stuck. So much so. Um, one last question before we close up. Um, you touched on ego and our identity. I know like when I read your book, something came up to me about the shift from our ego force to our soul power. And I think that you talked a little bit about that in there as well, but I don't know if you have any additional words about 
you know, we, we, we went real deep real fast. So I don't know if like that's been covered or what have you, but like I said, it just, I wrote in my notes when I, as I was kind of, I was going through your journey in the book that that shift of the identity and that ego force, when you're saying, you know, that's trying to keep us together into our soul power. Is that the, sh- the shift of surrender or do you have anything? Yeah, else that like I, to I think that, that is a layer of surrender for sure. You know, I, I think it would just be helpful real quick for people to understand the, the nature of the ego and how we get conditioned, you know, as, as children, we're, we're born into this incarnation where we're in touch with our essence. We're in touch with our soul. We're in touch with right. the divine. You look into a child's eyes, a child is free, a child is alive, a child is, you know, we look into a child's eyes and we melt. We're just reminded of what we were originally, you know, we're resonating with what we really are. And, and, but a child is born into a preset, shall we say, uh, framework of conditioning based on parents and grandparents and society and uh, religion and culture and karma. And so we're born into this preset framework. And then we meet our parents and they're doing the best that they can do based on their conditioning. And we're born into some dysfunction as human beings. And so here we are, these bright, soulful beings born into this framework and maybe there was pain maybe there was trauma maybe there was sexual emotional physical mental abuse maybe mom wasn't around maybe dad was crazy an alcoholic or or they were fighting or maybe they were just nice people but didn't have the emotional skills to know Mm -hmm. how to communicate and meet our needs i mean it could have been whatever range of the spectrum but there's always some level of of something trauma that we face as human beings and so two things happen where we start losing touch with our soul, with our essence, you know? And I think life is the process of remembering and waking up. And so the first thing is, as children, we start learning to shut down, disconnect, not feel, shut down, disconnect, not feel. Mom is crazy, dad is alcoholic, mom's beating dad, whatever's going on. So we, oh, this is too much. So let me suppress that. Let me shut down. Let me disconnect. Let me erect, you know, mechanisms and walls in my heart. So I don't have to feel that. So layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer upon layer of unfelt feelings starts to build up and block our hearts and our connection to our true essence, to our, to our, to our light, to our soul. Then we learn a way of being to go into the world. And maybe dad says, Hey, don't do that or girls should be seen and not heard or boys don't cry Mm. or whatever it was. And so slowly we start to unconsciously, who do I need to be in order to be loved? Who do I need to be in order to be accepted, validated? And so we start to contort ourselves into a shape, you know, metaphorically of, oh, when I do this, I get love. I'm going to do more. Okay. When I don't do this, I get punishment. I'll do less. And so we start developing all sorts of roles, masks, personas in order to, or characters to, to fit in, to get love, to get validation, to get approval. And, and slowly we begin to disconnect from our true essence Mm -hmm. and these ways of being, we hold on to so tightly, they get reinforced as we get older. They work for us when we're five and seven and eight, but they stop working for us when we're 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and on. And so we hold so tightly to these ways of being as we, we become this shape, this being, this person. And here's the thing. We think that this pattern of, 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 this character, this pattern is who we bec- is who it's we are. It's us. We it's think us. it's who we are. Yep. Then we hold so tightly onto that. And now we become successful that way. We make money that way. We learn to do relationship that way. And we hold so tightly to that. We really believe it's who we are. And I'm simply saying, is that who you really are? Or is it simply who you've been conditioned to be? Who, we have to start mm. questioning. Who am I really? Who Am I really? Because the degree to which we've been conditioned is the degree to which we're not free and we don't have free will. So we first have to realize I've been conditioned. We've been conditioned and that we are not our conditioning. Because many times I hear people say, no, 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 this is just, it's just who I am. I'm just uh, nice. I'm just, you know, polite. I'm just shy. I'm just loud. I'm just, you know, uh, uh, I love taking care of people, uh, but we don't realize that it's, it's, 
it's really more of our conditioning. And so I think we have to start questioning mm. our conditioning and our motive by stepping back and becoming aware of ourselves, you know, and beginning to question what we do and why we do it and where it's coming from and to start observing ourselves. And we will start realizing many of the things that we do are just patterns. They're not really who we are. And so that's the place to begin. It's cultivating the awareness to observe mm. ourselves. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and so that's in terms of the ego, you, you were talking, yeah, we're not the ego, you know, but, the, but, but we've been conditioned to be that. And ego isn't a thing. It's really a process of identification that if we can then step back and observe the pattern that we are, we, we see that, oh, it's just, I'm just a, a, a collection of pattern, patterns. That's not actually me. And if, if you can see that I'm not that and you can observe that, then you can begin to change that. And that's, I think, a beginning to realize that, ah, what I am is infinite. What I am is pure essence. What I am is divine consciousness. What I am is pure consciousness. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and so I really do believe there is a shift right now. And this relates to surrender in terms of, I call it the ego-based model of manifesting and living versus the surrender-based model. And I think the old ego-based way is all about what do I want for my life? What do I want? What do I want? What do I want? And I tell people, yeah, you might get what you wanted, but usually you reach a point of dissatisfaction. And many times you, you might get what you want, only to realize that what you thought you wanted is not what yeah. you really wanted. It's just what you thought right. you wanted based on who you thought you were. So even from the level of the ego, our goals are often projections mm. of unmet uh, from our wounds, right? Of we want love. So if I can achieve this and do that and be famous, then I'm going to be loved. So even what we think of as our goals to the ego is not really what we want. So we're never going to be fulfilled that way. So I invite people to ask themselves, as we recognize this, what is it that life wants to express through me? What is, what, is, what is the deepest impulse of what life wants to manifest through me? And to feel that, to tune into that, to align with that, you know, and, and open to that. And I think when we, when we can do that, then we can align our, our, our mind, our plan, our strategy, our money, our resources, our actions with our soul then we're in surrender, then we're in the flow, then we are, then we are working in harmony with the force of nature and nature supports mm. us. Ugh. Yes, well, I feel your soul power, let me just say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this conversation has been so amazing. Um, Y'all go get the book. It's uh, The Magic of Surrender. Finding magic the of courage, Surrender, yeah. Finding the Courage to Let Go. And where can this book be found? Also, where can sure. they find you to, yeah. to follow along yeah. with your journey? Thank you. Uh, people can get the book at uh, obviously Amazon. Go get it on Amazon. Write a review. Send me, an, mm. send me, a, send me a message. Uh, I'm reachable on Instagram. Say hi, Instagram, Facebook. Um, where else? My website, coopblackson.com. Uh, you can find out more there. One of my favorite journeys I do. Uh, is in Bali for 12 days, take people deep in the process of unconditioning. That's uh, mm. www.boundlessblissbali.com whenever Bali's open. Awesome. And I'll put all that information too in the show notes. Thank you. It has been so amazing connecting with you here. I really appreciate you. Thanks for having me. My pleasure.